Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we've got a new track. All the kids were doing it, so I had to get one too. A Traxxas TRX4. I normally avoid ready to run, since building up the kit is just as much, if not more fun than driving it. But Traxxas haven't done a kit in a long long time, so there's not much hope of them doing one now. When you open the box, you're greeted with a Traxxas TQI transmitter. It's nothing too spectacular, but it has all the right knobs and switches to operate the truck. It's even programmable using a blinking LED menu system. Then we've got the truck in a poly bag and some paperwork. And that's about it. It's pretty bare bones, but it's the truck that we want, not all the accessories that we'll probably just end up losing anyway. From the box, the body's held on with two body clips that go through the bag. It looks like it's done the job, as the body looks nice and fresh. It doesn't have a scratch on it. Considering it's a clear body, Traxxas have done a very good job in dressing it up. The EXO, the snorkel, all the bits on the back really do disguise the simplified details of the vac form body. I do wish that they'd made the windows transparent though. And with all that out of the way, we can get to the good bit, the chassis. And starting at the front, we've got a nice chunky plastic bumper with a fake winch. The good bit though, the mounting posts are the same width apart as the SCX10 and similar. So there's loads of bumpers that should bolt straight in. The steering servo isn't the most powerful, but it should be adequate to start using the truck. And like all the electronics, it's waterproof. But that is pretty standard these days on the high end ready to runs. The dampers have threaded bodies for that super fine preload adjustment. I've never gone into that much detail with the scalers though. I just set them so the chassis sits nice and level and the preload is nice and light. The motor is Traxxas's 21 turn 550 Titan, a perfectly good motor that no doubt Traxxas have matched the stock gearing to. The ESC is 3S capable with drag brake. It's waterproof so should do the job perfectly well. It also has this red beck connector that apparently connects to the battery. I'm not sure if it's switched or not, but I'm sure it's going to come in very handy as a power source. On the battery lead we have the usual bit of card with some dire warnings, which I'm sure are very important. It's attached with a rubber band, which I like. It makes it nice and quick to remove. There's another red label on the wires too. We'll have to leave that there for now though, just in case we find something wrong with the ESC. Next we have a mini servo that runs the two speed shifter. And moving across to the other side, we've got some more of those nice threaded body dampers. The radio tray has a nice bit of antenna tube to get the antenna up above the rest of the structure. It's nice that they've done it properly rather than just leaving it loose. The radio box is sealed with O-rings and has a rubber bung for access to the bind button. Next to it is a little window so you can see the status LED. Looks like a very well thought out enclosure. Just beside the radio box are the two diff lock servos. They connect with some small Bowden cable, a bit like the brake cable on a push bike. It goes down to the axle to operate the diff locks. You can see them on the underside doing their thing. The front one is a bit concerning though, as it's in contact with the motor, but hopefully it's not going to get too hot. The drive shafts are fairly slim and they feel good and solid. It also looks like they have CVDs at the end rather than universals. The real party piece though are the portals. In effect, they raise the axle up above the center of the wheels for massive diff clearance. If I hold up an old SCX10 axle against the wheel nut, you can get an idea of the difference. And that alone will make clambering over tree roots a lot less frustrating. Admittedly, the newer SCX10 II has a far smaller diff than the original, but the clearance is still going to be quite a bit less than the TRX4. So that's the chassis. I think now we might as well have a quick look at the transmitter. If you've had a recent Traxxas, you're going to be familiar with it already. But if, like me, you haven't had a new Traxxas model for a few years, you're going to be more familiar with the old TQ3. Surprisingly, it seems the new radio shares some bits with the old 27 meg unit. The red rocker and the trigger appear to be identical. The TQI is a fairly good fit in my hands. I can just about reach the wheel with my thumb for one-handed driving, which is quite important when you're holding a camera in the other hand. The two-speed rocker doesn't get in the way, but it's still nice and easy to switch while driving. The diff lock toggle could possibly be in a better spot. It might be a bit tricky to reach while steering at the same time, but I'm sure it's one of those things that you get used to. On the back, there's a cover for the optional Traxxas link module. If you get one, you can program the transmitter through an app on a smartphone. Quite neat, but for this truck, I don't really think it's going to be necessary. Next to the diff lock toggle, there's the menu and set button. 
Using blink patterns on a red and a green LED, you can set up things like endpoints, expo, and servo reverse. In the foot, we have the battery tray, which takes four double A's, which I much prefer over LiPo or other wired packs. With loose cells, you can grab some alkalines from a nearby shop if you get caught short. And that just leaves the paperwork bag, where we find some body clips, a few tools, Allen keys, and a good old cross wrench. Some Traxxas decals, a service book which hopefully has some exploded diagrams in. They're also available on the Traxxas website. Not as good as building a kit, but it does give a good idea on how it all fits together when you have to do repairs. The warranty card, which I'm sure I'm going to forget all about as usual. The rather nicely printed quick start guide. Very nice and colourful and well laid out. It's not the full manual though, for that you have to download a PDF, but it's better than nothing. And lastly, there's this plastic part. Not sure what it's for, but it appears to link up with the body post somewhere. I can't find any mention of it in the manual, but I'm sure it's going to be very useful for something. To power up the truck, we need a battery. I'm using a Turnergy Square 2S LiPo, which fits a treat. Traxxas do some nice packs too, but they're a little bit pricey for what you get. One advantage though, the Traxxas gear is all plug and play. For this LiPo, we need a Traxxas to XT60 adapter. This one has the older Traxxas high current connector, but since the newer Traxxas ID connector is backwards compatible, it's going to work just fine. We need four cells in the transmitter. I'm using any loops, which are low self discharge NIMI cells. They work a treat for transmitters as they lose very little charge if you don't use the radio for a while. OK, the transmitter's on and ready to go. We can pop a box under the chassis to get the wheels off the ground, just in case we get a runaway. Connect up the battery, and nothing happens. If you don't read the manual, you can come unstuck here, as I've seen in a couple of forum threads. You have to press the set button on the ESC to turn it on. I do rather like the momentary on off button. It means when you plug the battery in, it always comes up in the off state. Great for safety. The steering seems to work quite nicely with its 45 degrees of turn, except it looks like the endpoints are set just a little bit high. The hubs are hitting the stops before the servo, but that should be simple to adjust. We'll have to look into that later. The ESC seems to be quite happy too. The drivetrain doesn't sound too bad. There's a little bit of a tick to it, but that will probably work itself out after a few minutes of running. Right, I think that's everything roughly checked out, so it's time to do what all RTRs are meant for, taking it straight out into the woods to see how it runs. Now, a bit of a funny story, sort of. The day after I found my TRX4 in stock, my dad found one too. So we have a grey one and a red one. Very nice. I'll upload the rest of the first run as a separate video, so it will be available at 50 frames a second. Next for the TRX4, I'm going to run it a few more times, get it a bit grubby, then we can see if there's any weak points. From what I've seen though, other than the mini servos, there's very few problems that come up. Like most of the Traxxas models, as long as you don't go too silly with it, it just works. For now though, that's about it, so thanks for watching, like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if you've got something on your mind. Bye guys!